And you can be seated. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Pastor Monica was to minister this evening, but uh, there was a, 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 relative, a relative that had passed away and she needed to be uh, with some of the family and therefore is not able to uh, minister here tonight. But I want to continue on the message that we started this morning. Obviously, with, with time, I wasn't able to get through all of the passages that I wanted to share. But the theme, for those of you that were not here this morning, was simply this, slippery paths. We use an illustration, especially with winter in our midst, how that it's so easy for us to slip and fall. None of us intentionally want to go out and have a fall. Not only is it embarrassing, but the older we get, you can end up breaking something because our bones are a little more brittle. And unfortunately, even within our church, that has happened to some, some people. But we were using the illustration by way of, in our Christian walk, we don't intentionally want to walk away from the things of God. But because of the world and the world conditions in which we live, everything else bites at our time and unfortunately gets the attention that it shouldn't when God should be the one that's getting all of our intention. When we consider what the Lord has done for each and every one of us, but yet so often He's put let me put it this way, at the back of the bus. And the only time that we really call on Him is we're in a panic mode. Something terrible has happened. You've received some bad news, and then all of a sudden, we think about the Lord. You see, this happened in the life of the children of Israel, and we'll look a little closer at it in a moment, a people that God had done so much for. You and I are no different than what they were. Many of us have seen God do extreme miracles in our generation. We have been in the position where God has answered our prayers. A loved one has got saved. We got that job. We received that raise that we needed. Something amazing happened. But somewhere along the way, we, we slipped off the straight and narrow path. Just little by little, something else came up. Something was on, on television or, or some friends dropped by or, well, you know, it's a, a little cold out tonight, so I, I don't think I'll go to church. Or, or we wake up in the morning and it's like, oh, it's windy out there. It's raining. I'll just stay under the blankets. And all the time, it's a lack of discipline in our life. But the problem with that is, when we don't discipline our lives, we miss out on so much that God has in store for us. And sad to say, we open ourselves up to the attacks of the enemy. You know, what's amazing when we, when we think of the, of the children of Israel, and I'll look at Scripture in a moment, they were under God's wonderful blessing. But then they got into idolatry. They started the worship the false gods, instead of worshiping the one and only true God. Now, we've said this before from the pulpit. You not, may not be sitting worshiping a particular statue within your home, but there are so many things that can become literally idols in our life where we spend more time on that than we do on God. And little by little, we're getting further and further from the Lord Less and less prayer, less and less Bible reading, less and less time spent with the family of God, less and less time in our witness, and before long, we're literally, and the danger is, where we can be in a backslidden condition. Now, you don't want to go there. I'm sure you're like me. I want to always be under that blessing of the Lord, and God Help me to keep on that straight and narrow path. That's why we read the Scriptures like we do from cover to cover because it gives us such a balance in how that God says, when you honor me, I will honor you. But there was a time in Israel where God used even the enemy to punish Israel. 
Now realize that we're under grace, but it's amazing how we can punish ourselves when we're not serving the Lord, <clears throat> when we're not doing the things that God wants us to do. This morning I finished off with Psalm 73, and I'll read verse 17. Again, here what was happening was the, the, the psalmist here, the, the writer, uh, Sam of Asphath, what was going on here was he was simply complaining about how everybody outside of the kingdom, all those that were worldly, seemed to be the ones that were getting blessed. And we see that all the time as well, because sometimes we have it in our mind, well, you know, if they're not serving God, then nothing will go right for them. Now, by and large, that can be true, but the other side is also true, is that there are a lot of people that are not serving God, that are doing well, that are prospering, that are in health, and everything is going good for them, seemingly, while they're here on this earth. But then the psalmist gets to verse 17. After pouring out all of his complaints to God, Lord, what's the, why should I even serve you? What, what, why is it important when, when this is going on in the world? But here's the importance of church in our life. Now, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. This is the building where we come together. But the Bible really constantly instructs us to come together, to be with Him. And it says here in verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. See, there's one thing that you have to understand, and it's this. We're going to tell you the truth. But here's the problem sometimes. Sometimes we can't handle the truth. Sometimes we don't want to know the truth. Why? Because, you see, the Holy Spirit then starts to gently and lovingly convict us. See, God doesn't condemn us, but God's Holy Spirit convicts us if we're watching something we shouldn't, if we're listening to stuff that we shouldn't, if we're doing something that we shouldn't. It means when you hear the truth of the Word of God, you have to do something with it because then you have to become accountable. Whereas if you don't hear the truth, well, you can, well, I'll do anything I want. And that's the problem with so many of our young people today is they don't know the truth of the Word of God. They, they don't know the difference any longer between what is right and what is wrong. But also the problem sometimes within the church in that we're on that slippery path where we try to make everything fit in our life. Well, this is okay. I'm, I'm only sinning a little bit. But a little bit's too much. God wants all of us to be serving Him with all of our heart, doing right, living in integrity, being man and woman of our word. It's so sad to say that people break their words so easily today. Friends, let me encourage you. If you say you're going to do something outside of death, do it. You know, if you say, boy, I'm going to be there at a certain time, you be there at a certain time. If you say, I'm going to teach Sunday school, you teach Sunday school. It's, it's a responsibility and a ministry that God has called you to. But you see, we sort of think, oh, well, I'll just miss this week, or I'll miss that week, or I don't need to be there every service. But if you're not here, then you're missing out on the instruction of the Word and the principles of God that will build your faith up. See, we all need our faith built up. I need mine built up. I need people speaking into my life. That's why I'm so appreciative, not only in the sense of being the pastor of this church, but other leaders that I can sit there and get ministered on to. When Pastor Brian's ministering, or Pastor Ripton, or Pastor Monica, or, or the guest speakers that come in, but we just don't have them for any reason. It's to build us up, to confirm the things that we're already saying. We don't sit with them and plan out what we're going to say or whatever, because we're serving the same God, the same Holy Spirit, and the words that come forth are all along the same line. Hallelujah. We need that instruction. It was here, the psalmist says, boy, I, I've been, Lord, what am I doing? Complaining about this, complaining about that, watching what others are doing. Boy, I came into your sanctuary, and then I understood. How did he understand? Because of the preaching of the Word of God. See, the Bible says 
an amazing statement, through the foolishness of preaching, the people come into the kingdom. It may seem foolish, but it's not. It's God's word that God uses in a very powerful way. He says, then I understood their end. See, too often we're looking at what is instead of realizing what's going to be. You see, friends, there's one thing that is for sure. Jesus is coming back. And you better not be on a slippery path. You better know that you're born again, that you're saved, that you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, that you're not fooling around, that you're not sitting on a fence, but you're wholly serving the Lord. Because the Bible says there is an end. You see, Jesus is a righteous judge. He judges righteously. And it's not that we have not been warned. I mean, the, the children of Israel, we'll see it in a moment, they, they saw all of these things of God. They saw God move firsthand in their life. And yet they still went after other idols. I could number a lot of different idols. I mean, the, the, the one today that we've got to be so careful with, church, is social media. You know, do a little inventory. How much time do you spend on your phone or your iPad and then mark up how much time am I spending with God? How much time are you in gossip? And how much time are you under the blessing? Because most of us know that social media, a lot of it's just gossip. And a lot of it's non-true. Many of you know that. Not everything you get on the internet is true. Many of you know that. But here's something. Everything that's here in this GPS is true. You can believe every word of this. This will give you life, and it will give you life more abundantly. Boy, the psalmist started to understand that. Because when we get down to verse 24, Thou shalt guide me with, with thy counsel. If you go and ask the world today, they'll give you wrong advice. There may be some good advice in some places, but, you know, when you want spiritual advice, where's the place to get it? It's in the house of God. It's not from Oprah. Not from some new age philosophy somewhere. It, it, it's from the Word of, of God. He said, we want God's counsel in our life. Yet people will run to this one and to that one and, and so forth, or run to this psychic and that psychic. It's amazing. Even the many, what we would call so-called Christians, read their stars. Go to the Word of God. It'll give you clear direction. <laughs> it really will. It says, Thou will give me thy counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. You see, what our end is, is glory. What the world's end is, is destruction. They may look like they're winning right now, but you and I already know that we have won. See, what I'm trying to say is keep on God's path Keep off the slippery path because, boy, once you start to go down that, you're in trouble. It's very hard once you start to slip. I mean, your legs and hands and everything go all directions. We need to be on the rock, Christ Jesus. He is the rock. And in verse 25 it says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? Isn't it good to know that there's somebody in heaven that's watching out for you and watching out for me? God knows everything about us. The Bible is filled with great examples of that. I don't need to go into them. And there is none upon the earth that I desire but thee. What a statement. There's nothing on this earth that I desire but thee. That, that's a phenomenal statement right there. Because you see, here's the secret about God. If you desire Him, you'll enjoy everything else. But if your desire is towards all the other things, do you know what all you have at the end of the day? Heartache and trouble. And many of you know that you got to replace your car every so often. Breaks down. Stuff happens. You know. But God is eternal. Right? Let, let that be your desire. Let, let there be more desire in your life. And Lord, let there be more desire in my life for, for things of you. 
that, that I may serve you more for his God. Because he is coming back. And, and he wants us to be serving him. He, he says, will I find faith on the earth when I return? Let it be that we are man and woman of faith and faithfulness. Amen. You see, verse 26 is, my flesh and my heart faileth. See, in the natural side of it, you and, I, you, can I, you and I can fail if it's not for God. The difference is that God, that it's God that helps us. Amen. But God is the, the strength of my heart. Literally, when it uses that term, God is the strength, you know, you know what the translation of that is? God is my rock. God is the rock on which I stand. And He is my portion forever. Isn't that wonderful? May He be a great big portion in our lives <laughs> where we just have, have more and more of God. In Jeremiah 23, 12, here Jeremiah, we talked a little bit about him this morning being cast into the pit and so forth and rescued out of it. But prior here, uh, speaking regarding the false prophets that were in the land, wherefore their way shall be unto them a slippery way. It's amazing how many uh, terms of slippery there is in the Bible. A slippery ways in the darkness. Friends, we want to be on that right path. Amen. Thy word is what? A lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. It's what the psalmist said in Psalm 119. But their ways, if, if we're going down that slippery path, then our way is darkness. We're just always groping in the dark, never satisfied. And that's what's happening with our, with our world today. They're, they're not satisfied. Most people today, sad to say, are just but existing. But as believers, we should have a smile on our face because we know that no matter what we have in our pocket, God will come through for us because we're following Him. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. You see, church, even though this is in the Old Testament, and in the Old Testament there was pretty much immediate judgment, but let me tell you, there will be judgment of the believer, there will be judgment of the sinner. It's only postponed a little bit, but we will all come under God's judgment. And we need to have done those things that are right and proper, in His sight. Amen? Now, I'm not talking about a faith by work, but I'm talking that there's a life to live, that there's a change that comes into our heart, there's a desire of leaving the old things behind and pressing forward towards the mark of the high calling of the God in whom we serve, where we want to honor Him and follow Him. You see, in Deuteronomy 32, 4, I... Related this at the end of the service in prayer. He is the rock. Who's your rock? Now, I'm not talking about that film star. I'm talking about Jesus being the rock. Amen? When you think of a rock, a rock is something solid. Amen? It's, it's all movable. You know, if you go up into the Muskoka area, they got rocks up there. They, they aren't this size. They, they're massive. Right? The rock faces are incredible. They're solid. They are not going to move. Jesus is your rock. Jesus is my rock. Please be, be founded on Him, not the things of this world that are so temporal. They will give some satisfaction, but not lasting satisfaction. Because what I love about our Savior is that no matter what goes on around us, He gives a peace. You don't understand it. It's sometimes you shake your head and wonder, why am I so calm in this situation? I mean, if you were to think about it long enough, fear can enter in. But God gives such a peace that far exceeds any of that. That's just the greatness of God. And it tells me His work is perfect. Perfect. See, the Lord has a plan 
and a purpose for all of our lives. You're not here by accident. Look how far God has brought you to bring you in under the walls of this church tonight to hear this message. And yet it goes on to say all his ways are judgment. He's a God of truth and without iniquity. And it says just and right is he. And how true that is. See, sometimes we don't always understand at the moment the way God moves and how he answers prayer. Sometimes it seems that he is not answering our prayer. Sometimes it looks like he's putting us through a difficult task. But you see, the Bible talks about a refiner. Sometimes he allows us to go through the storms of life just like he did with Job. But Job came out with twice as much as what he went in with. And when God takes you through that refinery, He brings you out as pure gold. He, he gets rid of the dross. And many of you know there's still dross in some of our lives. God's still working on each and every one of us. Amen. I always love what Christine said. Well, if you have your wings, you wouldn't be here. You'd be in heaven. And how true that is. God is still working on us. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 30, we use this term because it's, and this is where it comes from when we talk about prayer, one puts a thousand to flight and two ten thousand to flight. And that is true. When God's on your side, the multiplication figures are incredible. But the sad part here with it being used in this context was God was using the enemy to punish Israel because of their disobedience, because of getting away from Worshipping the false gods, not the true God. And listen to what it says. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them? Meaning God had stepped back and allowed the enemy to come in and punish them. But then if you read beyond that, it shows you that their rock, the enemy, it's just like a little boulder is not like our rock who is our God. Because when God is on your side, amazing things can happen. Prior to the verse 30 there, it talks about the foolishness of Israel. But yet when I look at our generation today, friends, I've never seen foolishness like it. Have you? Some of the decision that some of the smartest people on our planet are making that are so contrary to the Word of God that makes no sense whatsoever that God has to allow them and to give them up to their evil ways. See, God was using all of this and yet reminding Israel, look, if you'd have been the one trusting in me, you would be putting a thousand to flight. You'd be putting ten thousand to flight. But because you've walked away from me, because you've gone down a, a slippery path, the enemy, it has been reversed. The Egyptians, the Canaanites, you were fleeing from them. And how true that is in our life when we're running from the enemy and fear and turmoil. Because we've forgotten who he is, what he can do, how much he loves us, what he has in store for us. Oh, I can't wait every week. And it's not just because I'm a pastor, but I, I just love getting to the house of God to, to, to hear what the Lord is doing. Can He speak to me at home? Yes, He does. When I walk on the road, I'm driving my car. Yes. But there's something when I come together with you as believers and our giftings are working together and, and, and we're serving the Lord together and we're worshiping God that the Holy Spirit just speaks so beautifully into our hearts and into our lives. He is the rock. Amen? You see, those false idols, when you're in need, I want to tell you something, your television won't help you. The walking dead won't help you. The Emmys won't help you. Whatever other major Super Bowl won't help you. Do I love sports and certain other things? Yes, but not when it clashes with me being in God's house. I'm going to be here or be serving God somewhere or on my back somewhere and not able to be in church, but I'll still be praising God somewhere. 
And so should all of us. I, I love what Hannah says in 1 Samuel uh, 2, verse 2. Listen to the words of, here was, here was this woman, needed a miracle from God. She, uh, I mean, people, you know, she was being made fun of because she couldn't have any kids. Elkanah, her husband, had a, a, another wife and she had children, but Hannah had none. Uh, she goes and she prays and, and uh, you know the story. But this is what she says when, when God honors her and, and she had prayed through and sought the Lord and made the commitment that if she had a child, she was going to dedicate uh, them to the Lord. Uh, when you have kids, uh, don't bring them and leave them in the temple. Uh, uh, did that back then. <laughs> I don't know how they took care of that, but he was finally brought and left at the temple, uh, Samuel. But listen to what she says. What a statement. There is none holy as the Lord. There's none holy as the Lord. For there is none beside thee. Oh, friends, get this. Neither is there any rock like our God. Are you founded on that rock tonight? I, I, I trust that all of us are. Amen? You see, we all need to hear this message. Some maybe for the first time. All of us, no matter how long we've been saved, the fact is we have to make sure that we're on the straight and narrow path, that we're not going down slippery paths, whatever that is, being in places where we shouldn't be, doing things we shouldn't do, unless we're the ones that is initiating, preaching the gospel, or doing something to reach somebody in a way that is not compromising to our faith and what we believe. Amen? What we believe. David said this in 2 Samuel 22, verses 2 through 4. And I'm, I'm just about finished here because we, we want to take time to pray with each of you tonight. Listen to what uh, David says here. Uh, what, what's interesting about this uh, story? Let me give you a little backdrop. Many of you know when David killed Goliath, right? You all know that story from a child. How, how many rocks did he pick up from the brook? How many? Usually Pastor Brand, uh, Ripton gives you a little fit. Five rocks. How many did he use? One for Goliath. Do you know why he picked up five? Because Goliath had four brothers. Goliath had four brothers. And what happens here was David was fighting another giant. And the other giant was defeating David. And one of David's men came along and slew the giant. And you'll, you'll get that in, in, in uh, chapter 21 there of 2 Samuel. And then three of other David's men went out and slew the other three giants. So David was prepared not only to take on one giant, but all five of them. The other four. And finally, the other four lost their life. But in response to that deliverance, David's life being spared, he, he, was, he was losing the battle. He was losing the battle. But isn't it good to know that that's why we need each other? That's why the, the, the body of Christ. There's some giants that I can slay, but there's other giants you can slay. And together we can defeat them. Right? And with God's help. This is what, what David said in 2 Samuel 24, verse 2. And he said, oh, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. He, he was about to lose his life. But the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, the God of my rock in him will I trust. He is my shield and He is the horn of my salvation. Meaning, when it uses that term horn, it's just talking about He's the strength. He's our strength, hallelujah, of the very salvation that we have. He's my high tower, my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. 
But if you're on a slippy path, wow, you need to be on solid rock. You need to be on the flat rock. You need stability in your life. We all need stability in our life. There's too many. And the Bible talks about these days in which we live, that there are many wavering in their faith. No stability. They're in, they're out, they're up, they're down, they're on a fence. They don't know what post they're on. They don't know if they're coming or going. The church needs to rise up and know who we are, who is in us. Regardless of what others say, we're going to serve the Lord. Joshua said it so clear. I mean, even in Joshua's day, there was the challenge. Some wanted to go one direction. But thank God for Joshua. As for me and what? My house, we will what? Serve the Lord. I'm here to encourage you to, to, to serve the Lord with all of your heart. Amen? Hallelujah. To serve Christ with every part that is, it, that is within you. Matthew 7, 24, 25. We're, we're just about there. This is good stuff. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and what? Do with them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon. (laughs) Who's the rock? Are you built on Jesus? Not talking about building a house here. It's using the principles of where you build your house. You can build it on sand. And we know what happens when you build something on sand. If you read more of that chapter, it tells you. All right, I've got to close out with this here. 1 Corinthians 10. Boy, I could probably do a whole message on this alone. Uh. You see, here, here's what I want to say before I share this. The very same people who enjoyed great privilege from God, also fell into serious apostasy from God. Now, I need to read that again. The very same people who enjoyed great privilege from God also fell into serious serious, serious apostasy from God. It can happen so easily. It doesn't take much. Now, let me just, on that backdrop, Read verse 1 of Corinthians 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. Doesn't want us to be unaware. How that our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, experienced the miracle power of God, covering by day, covering by night, how God watched over them, how the Red Sea opened up for them. Amazing. Amazing. The stuff that God has did, done. All were baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and, and all did eat the same spiritual meat. I mean, God provided for them the manna, the quail, water out of a very rock. Can you imagine? You'd think, boy, if you'd you'd seen that, that would be enough to keep you forever. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. They experienced, they saw, they watched. Even in the New Testament. The great miracles, they they seen, they saw, they watched. But what happened? They started to compromise. They started to get on a slippery path. Slowly but surely, they, they weren't as on fire as they used to be. They lost the edge. And thankfully, some of them were restored and came back again. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Think about that. They experienced so much, yet still 
they allowed themselves to take a different path. Instead of the straight and narrow, they took the broad way that led us to destruction. See, I don't believe we intentionally set out to do that. But I know that we can end up there. I've known too many people in my lifetime that made the wrong decisions. You say, well, where are they today? I don't know. That's between them and God. I just know that you and I need to follow the straight path and live for Jesus, not to fool around, do those things that are right, and serve the Lord with all of our heart. Why did all this happen? Verse 6. Now, these were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Isn't that like our world today? Oh, you know, let's go to Casino Rama and lose all the money we can. Can't pay your mortgage. Drink up, smoke up. Everything's wonderful. Everything is fine. Oh, in fact, it's legalized. It's got to be all right, Pastor. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Can you imagine if God was going to do that today, open up the ground? But they will be in judgment. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he What's that say? Fall. Oh, you better know that you're in Christ and Christ is in you. Amen. No fooling around. No, no not being caught in the midst of a... a don't, I've often said to people, you know, say, well, you know, people say, well, you know, I can do anything I want. I'm saved and whatever. But what, what if the rapture happens in your midst of adultery? I can't answer where you're going to be. I have no idea. I just know if you're not in adultery and Christ comes, you're all right. If you're in adultery and Christ comes, I don't know where you'll be. Right? Well, you've gone quiet on me. I hope you're not in adultery, fornication. Any of those things. One of the lovely things about our church here, we've had quite a number of people that have come in that have been, you know, in that place where they've been living relationships and, and under the preaching of the Word of God, they're, they're getting married. I think that's wonderful. The gentle conviction of the Lord. See, God wants us to do those things that are right. Amen? I, I don't want to take a chance regarding heaven. Amen? But see, here's the good thing for those of you that are living right. And there is temptation. See, here, it, it, it tells us, let's know that we're standing in the things of Christ. We don't want to be in those other areas where we can fall. But for you and I as believers, here's the great news. There is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So when you're serving God, and because you're serving God and you come under temptation or trial or some situation, if you're on that street and narrow, God will help you. you. Call out to Him, God will help you. But boy, if you're going down a slippery path, I'm telling you, the devil will just pour more ice on it. Why does he pour ice? Because where he's going is all fire. But He wants you to slip. And He wants you to fall. But God says, look, you keep on serving me. You see, he, God doesn't say the temptations will not come. They're, they're, all, they're all around us. But He says, I want you to know 
because you're serving me, because you're following me, because I'm your rock, because you're founded on me. Those things that will happen, I'm faithful. I'll make sure you're going to be all right. Whatever it may be, you'll be able to bear it. You'll be able to escape it because I'm your God and I love you. Would you stand with me right now? Hallelujah. I didn't think I was going to preach that long, but not only me all fired up, all oiled up, the Word of God is so great. You can never get enough of the Word of God, friends. It's good to be in God's house. You're going to get something for your soul here. Something that will bless you. You go home and watch TV. I don't think you're really even watching TV. You're watching more ads than you are TV. Have you noticed that lately? There's more ads than there is TV. Even if there is something that's wholesome. The Lord loves us. We want to take a little extra time tonight. The night is young. If you look at the, the world, they're, they're probably just heading out now. Now, we don't want to compare ourselves to them, but God wants to touch you tonight. If you don't know Him as your Savior, if you need a miracle in your life, you just need a touch from God. You, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to flood your soul and your spirit. They'll lead us in a song. And the moment they lead us in the song, I, I want you just to come out and, and, and join us right here because there, there can be more happen here in a few seconds, in a few moments. Sometimes than having to wait an hour at the emergency department. I'm for doctors and nurses. I'm for medication. I believe in all of those things. Balance and everything. But God can do something here tonight in your heart and in your life. Pastor Ripton's going to join me. Pastor Brian's going to join me here. We're going to pray for you. See, God's anointing is on our lives. God's power is in this house. The moment they start to sing, you just leave where you are and come out to the front. If, if you have to leave the service, we understand that. But if you don't need prayer, just still join us here in the service and pray for those that are out front. God wants to just touch us. Our, our rock wants to touch us tonight. Jesus wants to touch you. And it's not that He isn't, but this has been a special time just set aside. So Alana, just lead us. And just step out. That's taking a step of faith. Come. Maybe for you, it may be you want to stand in proxy for somebody else, somebody that's in need. Come. And if you're not able to stand until we get to you, just feel free to just take a seat in one of the front chairs here so that we can pray with you. Precious ones, we love you. We love you so much. We need each other. If it wasn't for one of David's men, his life could have been gone. Good to pray one for another. Just keep coming. Just come on a straight line there. Just make your way left and right of the altar here. You know, we have quite a number of folk in our church right now that need, need an incredible miracle. It's just the way that it is. You know? Anyone else, just please, just, just come. Hallelujah. Pastor Brian's going to start at this end, and Pastor Ripton the other end. I'll, I'll just start in the middle here, and we'll work our way through. Hallelujah. Oh, let God just touch us tonight. Oh, and once we pray for you, then just make your way back to your seat so that we know who we've covered, okay? Yes. Worthy.
Are you glad you came out to the house of the Lord? Amen. Thank you for being with us. Serve the Lord. Serve with all of your heart. Go out and have a great week. Be a blessing to those around about you. Be a great minister and ambassador for the kingdom. And look forward to seeing you at some of the midweek services or whichever service you can attend. Come and always remember, try and invite somebody. Plenty of flyers and so forth there. Use that as an invite. And I uh, look forward to seeing you at those services. Good night. God richly bless each one of you.